Welcome to Impacting Jamaica, where we shine the spotlight on the many but often ignored positive happenings, activities, projects and investments at every level across every sector to inspire, motivate and excite people everywhere. Impacting Jamaica is powered by the Philip and Christine Gore Family Foundation, the Jamaica Public Service Company, Manpower and Maintenance Services Limited, Red Stripe, Kyramed and Proven Investments Limited. Welcome to Impacting Jamaica. I'm Tamika Gordon. I'm speaking with Theron Bryan, founder of Minute Car Rental Company, Jamaica's first hourly car rental service. Having started in 2018, the company not only survived the pandemic, which actually shuttered or severely hampered many businesses, but it is now in expansion mode. So Ferron has joined us today to share his story of innovating to survive and grow his business. Thank you for joining us, Ferron. Hey, Tamika, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Great. Okay. So first of all, tell us, how did you get into this line of business? Um, so, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit different, you know, so I'm a marine engineer by profession, um, so I'm a chief engineer on yachts, and um, I was always looking to diversify to figure out what I was going to do at home, you know, and um, one day I was literally in that, in that peak of trying to figure out what I should do, one day I was literally just passing by, I believe I was in Costa Rica and I saw a zip car and I was like explaining about all the rentals and stuff like that. And I was like, man, that can't work. And mm -hmm. in seeing that, I was just like, I was so impressed. And I decided that, you know what, I'm going to start this thing. I'm that kind of guy, you know, I aim and shoot. Um, and then we came, I, I figured this out roughly about in August and then we started in November. So it was that close. Interesting. So outside of being a, an, an engineer, were you in, involved in any other entrepreneurial um, ventures before starting this company? Or were you a newbie to the to the, the whole realm of operating a business? Well, I can say pretty much I'm a newbie to the whole realm of operating a business because um, in high school, you know, you do the small things, you know, like to juggle to make money, etc. And outside of that, we kept with the parties and stuff, but nothing on the scale, you know, nothing of having employees that, you know, you have to be, be responsible for and cars and assets and liability and understanding different, oh, different compositions of our business comes together. And um, even to even up to last year, I was still feeling like a newbie until I joined Sandra's Revo program, you know. And after going through that incubator series, and I, I figured out that I wasn't so immature to the whole business thing, and I got a lot more comfortable since. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that you juggled a bit in high school. One of my questions um, relates to that. Um, I actually wanted to ask you, how, how do you feel that your childhood or your upbringing positioned you to become an entrepreneur? Well, I, I've always had this goal since I was about 12 years old of retiring from working for anybody else by the time I was 30 years old. And I remember repeating that constantly. And I was, I've always been the type of person who always who knew what I wanted. You know, from, from the get where I could say, hey, this business thing, this is where I want to go. And I've just literally channeled that energy. So from a, from I was a child, that has always been my phase, my my thing to say, I want to be a business man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you're a newbie in the sense that you had no formal training as a business operator, but you juggled a bit in high school. Tell me about some of that, th that juggling. What exactly did you do? <laughs> All right. So I, like how, so I went to a boarding school, I went to Knox College, and I live off campus. So a lot of persons don't know, but Knox is the only co-ed um, secondary high school, boarding high school in Jamaica, right? Mm. And because of that, you know, I had a lot of classmates and stuff who needed stuff off campus. Um, so I would be the ones to kind of get it for them at a cost. I also had things like 
the boarding uh, facilities, they had a lot of things going on where people would steal their money. I was like a loan shark in a sense there as well. <laughs> and then also I would have like the, the lower grades selling candies and stuff on the different blocks for me and stuff like that. So, you know, it's the entrepreneurial spirit has always been there. Clearly. And you were being groomed even then um, through your natural inclination toward operating a business. Exactly. Exactly. I never had physical, I never grew up with, to say someone was like a mentor to say, hey, my father was a businessman. I wanted to be a businessman. No, I just had that, that, that sense of, hey, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to figure it out as I go along. I'm going to try as much as I can to understand what this entails and how can I maximize on these talents, you know, or become better at being a business individual. So how did you end up in engineering then? It's a funny story. So um, in finishing in college, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Not college, in finishing high school, um, like, as I said, I had, as a 16-year-old, I was doing quite well. You know, and uh, uh, my mom insisted that I went to college and I didn't want to go. And uh, after insisting, she did pretty much everything. But I have a lot of family members who are engineers. So when she asked what I wanted to do, I said engineering because it just came natural because everybody else around me was an engineer. And that's when she went and found, at the time, Caribbean Maritime Institute, which is now CMU. Mm -hmm. And she pretty much did everything. And told me when to sign, when to turn up, I went there. And it so happened that by the time I arrived, I realized it was very expensive. You know, so I had to do something. I had to do quite well. And then moved into the career. Um, I kind of ended up liking it because it was very fruitful, very rewarding. Um, so you had something to look forward to. So pretty much that was how I became an engineer. So it wasn't necessary by choice, okay. <laughs> you know. Have you been able to use any of that background or, you know, your, your, your engineering studies or what you've experienced, what you experienced while working in the field to apply to this new venture that you have? Every single day. It's a nonstop innovative engine. all about the ingenuity, right? It's um, cars. One of the good thing is that in the summers, when I was going to high school, I used to work with my uncle and he was an automotive technician. And so I had a, a good background of cars. So when I decided to go into this field, it was it wasn't too off, right? Mm-hmm. But when it came comes on to like the ingenuity and systems and management, so I'm a chief engineer on a yacht, so I have a lot of systems that I have to create so that my second engineer and other um, crew members can follow in order to ensure that certain things do not get misplaced or damage or hurt someone. So, like, it taught a lot of systematic approach. How do I create systems? How do I value systems? And so forth. So, in our everyday life, every move that I make, I find that these, this knowledge that I got from being an engineer, that I have from being an engineer, just comes back in a hundred. Mm. I don't want to put you on the spot, but can you share like a, a real life experience or example that you, you have had to use that engineering background to apply to business operations of your car rental company? Yeah, sure. As I said, strategy and mm. um, structure. So in, in, as an engineer, you have to consider safety. And there are strict procedures of how to do step-by-step procedures of how to do something. You want to service something, if you want to operate an equipment, you have to have a structured way in which you're going to get this done. And then one of the things that I found in business is that you couldn't rely on people to use their initiative. You know, especially when you wanted to to push out a vision in the way you wanted to do it, right? You know how to create the simplest of form with rules and strategy and structure, right? of how persons, even the, what you say, the person with the least amount of education can actually come in and do this task with no stress. Okay. So that was one of the big things. And then it came, on, it came back to the whole knowledge of how power operated. It was easier for me to kind of sit down when I speak to the maintenance officer, the guys in charge of maintenance, when they're explaining things to me, they don't have to start from scratch. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so because of my my background, I can understand how things make up and they can actually break it down. I might not know the specifics, but I can understand and envision how it's supposed to. You know, so it's things like that makes makes the company run a lot more smooth, smoothly and like everybody else is a bit more comfortable. Because when we're talking to somebody who does not have the experience of a car, like we're explaining to an affiliate, why is it that we need to buy this, right? Or why is it that the car needs this part? And they have no knowledge, it makes it a lot harder for us. Mm-hmm. Why this business model though? Why this model or strategy? For a minute or, or a minute for your your car rental company the hourly strategy that you started off with it, it's very funny about how the name and how everything came together so minute rentals literally the moment i i thought of the idea like the name came to me in a flash minute rentals you know like it, it, it just all fell in place like it was just meant to be right um the reason why i chose hourly yeah, I like standing out. I don't want to do the norm. I don't want to do something that everyone else is doing. I strongly believe that if you want to do well, you need to solve people's problems, Mm -hmm. right? You need to find, create a business that's going to help individuals to solve their problems. And renting, giving somebody the option of short-term rental was something that they wanted, but nobody offered you know, so in one sense, we were now solving the, the problem of providing a short-term rental base to the Jamaican public. And with that, when we went into social media or any marketing platform to, to, to put the brand and the company, it would stand out, you know. So when people think about mini rentals, they're thinking, okay, they're different. So if you see one of our advertisements coming on social media, you're bound to click it. Right? I strongly believe that 7 out of 10 persons click on our ads when they see it on social media. And, and this is the reason, because it's different. It's different. Okay. Um, where where are you from? You mentioned Knox. Are you from the, the, the central part of the island? All right. So I was born in Trelawney, and then I moved to Kingston with my mom. Um, and then, coincidentally, I passed for Knox College from Portmore. So I ended up moving back to the country and I lived with my, my aunts and my grandparents for for that five-year period. Okay. Um, so so um, back to the business at hand now in terms of the, the company. How has your company grown since you started in 2018? And what are the what are some of the the, the expansion activities that you're now um employing? So in 2018, with this week. I came came to Jamaica, I believe, the 2nd of November, and uh, we started the company on the 12th of November, right? And we started with two small Suzuki Altos, right? Because the idea was that we'll have hourly rental. We want to start with small cars that's economical and people can move around quickly. It doesn't cost them much. And then we started in November, which was like the high season, right? Because you're going into Christmas. Mm-hmm. And we realized very quickly that, man, we didn't have enough cars. The phones were ringing nonstop. And that's when the affiliates program was formed. And uh, I reached out to some colleague of mine and I asked him, would they be interested to buy some cars and, you know, put in the fleet and we split the revenue at a 70-30 basis. And we used that model um, to kind of advance the company growing the fleet to roughly about 15 cars. So we went from two cars to 15 cars mm-hmm. within about six months, right? But then we had the challenge you now of kind of figuring out, okay, Faro, now you have these cars, you're getting these bookings, but there's so much more renting cars than just putting someone in the car. We started with our deposit system at about $2,000, um, which was just ridiculous thinking about it right now. You know, like someone will come and rent a car and they only put down a $2,000 deposit. Um, and man, we were just getting non-stop damages. Um, mm-hmm. So you were making that income, but you were paying it out. And then we had so much insecurities because at one point I I was still traveling back and forth, right? So the company was in a young stage, so we still needed that capital. So I needed my job to help kind of fuel the company. So I would hire managers to kind of to fill, to fill in. Mm-hmm. And that was like our biggest challenge. 
because no one could understood understand the vision that I was trying to push out. And we kept falling behind, falling behind, and then COVID hit, and then that I was, So how was that a challenge? You getting managers to to fill that void when you had to go back overseas? How was that challenging? Because the problem was, I don't believe that they understood the vision, right? A lot of persons, um, when you, when you think about managers, especially the, the business guys, business guys, because I tell people I'm not really a, a businessman, I'm an engineer. My job is fine, is solving problems. You know, that's what I do. Um, but a lot of these persons, they concentrate a lot on dollars and cents. You know, and mm. because they concentrate so much on dollars and cents, you know, they miss the grand vision of what, where you're bringing the company to. So what will happen is that they are so fixated on on being profitable and earning a profit that they lose the sight of what the company should be. And In what me, way would they lose sight though? Operationally, so they wouldn't operationally, do Operationally, yes. So, give me an example of what they wouldn't do that you needed them to do. So they'll move from renting cars, you know, they want to change the entire model itself. You know, like do not rent cars only, rent cars daily. You know, like things like that. And they wanted okay. to concentrate on that. But one of the things that they kept missing is that their make their biggest pull was the fact that we rented cars only. The reason right. why we had people coming through our doors more frequently than everyone else was because we rented cars. But given, you know, there are downsides to that because the more you rent cars, there's more maintenance and there's more things like that. And those were also things that we, we didn't figure out in time, you know. And these guys, they, they didn't have the skill set of, of maintenance. So when, I make, when the mechanic would come to them and say, hey, we need this part, it would be like, to my first comment earlier, they wouldn't understand how a car would work. So they'll be like, okay, no. Or they'll be like overcompensated. So it's either they're saying that, hey, all right, let's not buy that yet, or come on, let's buy this now. And you're spending too much on things that you don't really need. Versus when somebody comes to me and they say, hey, we need, you know, example, two tires. And I go outside and I look at these tires and I was like, okay, no, not really, you know. But some persons are not, they don't really understand. And that was one of our biggest, our biggest downfall within that period. And not to mention a lot of stealing as well. And, you know, oh. people, you know. So, so getting them to understand and live the vision of the key differentiation was exactly. a challenge. It was a big challenge. Okay. A, and big... you also faced um, theft yes. as one of the, the challenges and yes. just getting all the moving parts to gel together toward the vision that you wanted. Exactly. Exactly. Out of all of those, what was the the biggest challenge for you? All right, let me rephrase. What are some of the lessons that you had to learn quickly as you grew as a businessman? Um, get rid of people quickly when they don't match up. You know, don't, don't think that they will change. Don't think that, um, you know, they will get better. If they can't do the job, they can't do your job. Hire people who can do the job. You know, that's, that's number one. Um, number two, is that family and business do not mix. It mm. does not mix very well um, when you know have to think that, you know, because the family member is not living up to where you would want them to be, it, it now becomes very difficult for them to say, especially when they've been there since the beginning, to say that, hey, this is this is not going to work out, you know? So that's, that's another lesson. And then cash is key, you know? Cash flow is, is poor. So manage cash managing your cash flow at one point i was afraid to owe people you know when i started i was scared of owing anybody or you know once i get a bill i just want to clear it and then i i learned very quickly that that's not the way to do it you know you have to kind how of is it? It. you have to meet it go ahead no sorry i was asking how is it what's the way to do it you have to manage your your expenses properly you know, so, okay, I, I need to pay this person today. Um, I get this bill today, but the deadline is on the 30th of this month. You know, I'm not going to rush and pay this bill tomorrow. You know, it's no trying to keep money on your books for as long as possible you know, to ensure that you can keep that cash flow going to make sure your, 
your monthly expenses, your monthly overheads are, are flowing properly. So you have someone to pay next week, you don't pay them this week. You know, if you can now um, create a system where you, know, you don't pay somebody when they do every job, you don't do that. They get them on payroll and they say, hey, I will pay you every month. You know, say so they give you a bill, they present you a bill at the end of every month and you pay that. That way, you know, you, you better manage your expenses so you keep more cash on the books. That is very important. You know, if you can't manage your cash flow, and at first I really sucked at doing that. You know, it was a it was a massive lesson for me um, in, in learning how to manage cash flow and learning how to manage your accounts. All right. So those those were the, the key things for me. Mm-hmm. So in light of all of that, what is um what lesson would you share with an aspiring entrepreneur who is afraid to get started? somebody who has a business idea, who sees a niche or a need like um, you identified, but is just afraid to step out? As, as Nike said, just do it. You know, like, as I said before, or I'm the kind of person I am a truth, right? But there's a lot of negative and a lot of, a pros, a lot of pros and a lot of cons to that. So, like, you have the, the con of, because you aim a truth, you don't really properly vent the, 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 the challenges that you might face in starting, right? So, like me you now, I have to be very mindful of that. So, when I'm going into a new project, I have to know start getting these processes very properly. So, I have like a list of things that you know you have to go through. Do they meet these requirements before you start? But pro is, is that man, you're gonna start failure or not. You get so excited about doing it that you're gonna, you're gonna jump in and dive in, and it a gonna happen right now. Gonna happen, but yo. May I, go down, may, I, may, I, may I go do this, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have a business idea, you won't know if it will work until you start. Um, my father said something to me like early on um, that I, I thought was very important. You know, we don't have the grandest of relationship, but I remember this always. He said, while you're young, that is the time to be an optimist, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of my friends would complain that I'm too much of an optimist. And at one point, I was kind of taking it too literal, and he said, that's not a problem. When you're young, now is the time to be an up. When you grow older, you learn to be a realist, right? Because now you have experienced things, you understand what not to do, so you can look real. You look at things from a, from a real point of view. But as, as young people, I would advise anyone to continue to be an optimist, or if you're not aimed to be an optimist, you can dive into things, and if it does fail, you still have enough time to recoup and move on again and get lesson from it and move on. True, so true. We're taking a break now to hear from more sponsors. Grace has been part of some special moments over the years, helping to make them, well, more memorable, even when they're a little bit unexpected. And with 100 years of great taste behind us, you can be sure we'll be making even more moments for a hundred years to come. Grace, taste that moves you. John John, I know you're in there. I want to when lights are come back. I know Pinky this time. Akeisha. Akeisha, just like me tell Pinky. Give GPS your number and then we'll send your text with them things there. So you can't stop, knock my door. What you mean? DM or call JPS and tell them to add your phone number to your account and you will know everything all the time. You're not know for ask. Send your current contact information and always be in the know. Visit jpsgo.com for more info. Searching for a one-stop solution to all your facilities maintenance needs? Visit Manpower Maintenance Services Sales and Distribution Center. We stock a wide range of COVID-19 washroom, cleaning, and other supplies, gardening tools, chemicals, and more. Our experts are always ready to give you the best advice. Manpoint Maintenance Services Sales and Distribution Center, 14 Collins Green Avenue, Kingston, Freeport Commercial Center, Montego Bay, and 33 Ward Avenue, Mandeville. Visit or call us today, 876-920-47215. Welcome back. I'm speaking with Ferron Brown of Minute Car Rentals, and he's sharing some of his some of the lessons he has learned since launching his company, as well as some of his growth plans. 
Uh, okay, Farouk. So you are you are sharing with us, you know, some of the lessons that you would um impart to budding entrepreneurs who are afraid. They should just just jump into it. Just just do it. Just do it. That's what you would say. Interesting. So tell me about this affiliate program that you have and, and the, the expansion thrust that you have for your company. All right. So we, the, the beauty about Mini Rentals is what I've seen it evolve over the last four years is just phenomenal. Um, so in 2018, we started with our affiliates program where individuals could now input cars in our fleet and uh, from that they can earn passive income. Right, so we would take keep and take care of the cars under a two-year contract, and then you now you will now have the ability to earn passive income. So on the sixth of every month, you get a report, and then um, a couple months after that, depending, you know, when we just started, couple more, couple of days after that, we would now send you your bill to your bank account. And what has happened now is that the company has evolved, and we're moving into different aspects where we're going in, on the international scene. And we have seen that our booking, our, our reservation board is opening up to, to the point now where we don't have enough cars to fulfill that gap. So now we had to really think and think a lot more of how can we use this program to kind of build out in catering more to, to all of these reservations that we have, we're, we're getting. And that's when we found the rent cars model. So many rent cars, what it does now Sure, insurers, BCIC, I am able to provide you with insurance on my policy, a rent a car policy that allows you to rent your car per day. Right? So, say for example, now you had your car and you wanted to join our program, we would do a betting series, a betting process. Um, we'll look at your car once that is successful, then now we would add you to a reservation platform. And that would go through a bot system on WhatsApp. And what that does now is that, say, for example, I need an economic car. I will send out a blast to all the individuals who has an economic car on my reservation board. And then they will get the start date, the end date, and how much they will be paid. So once they have that now, they can now decide if they want to accept this booking or they want to decline. Because in WhatsApp, you'll have two buttons that it's accept or decline. If you choose to accept it, then I'll get that on our reservation board to say that, hey, Tamika Garden has just accepted this booking. You know, so what that does for us now, it allows us to cater to a lot more reservations while allowing the Jamaican public to actually earn from this and earn passive income. So if I have my, my car, my personal car, I can sign up to be an affiliate with your company. And right. that would allow my vehicle to be used as a rental car to bring passive income for me. Exactly. That's okay. exactly. Do you I have I mean? to have my car locked in with you for an extended period? No, you don't. It's literally as needed basis. Once you get entered onto our reservation platform, mm -hmm. you will now get the ability to see a booking request, accept it or decline it. Okay. You know, so it doesn't matter if it doesn't fit your schedule, you don't have to meet it. So it gives right? me flexibility as well. It gives you grand flexibility. And with that, we still take majority of the, the liability aspect because we have an in-house coverage that covers your cars in bumps and scratches up to 150000 And then outside of that, if something should happen beyond that, then we do have our insurers we can claim. Interesting. Tell me about the experience of winning the Jamaica Stock Exchange's pitch room in 2020 and how this helped to boost your company. Um, it, that has been, it was, it was just phenomenal. You know, the experience was just amazing. Um, it has opened us up to a different class of people and, you know, allowing more individuals to see the company for what it really is. Mm hmm because at first we were just there and a lot of persons didn't even know who we were. And then, then came the Jamaica Stock Exchange and we entered, we won, and then we found that a different category of persons started coming in to use our services, started trying to figure out what is this really about? You know, it allowed our affiliates pool to grow, right? So right before COVID, we, we grew our fleet roughly about um, 25 cars, almost 30. Right. So these were the things that allowed that to happen. And then we got 
um, the grand, which was which was pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. it helped us. So we wanted to start um, creating this platform that we're creating now, the Rinkars platform. But then COVID hit. All right, so COVID hit in a very in a very uh, man. It was not a good time. I was in Barcelona at the time, and I got stuck in Barcelona. And uh, it was just chaos here at home. And what COVID, COVID was good and bad for us, right? So COVID was bad in the sense that it showed up all our insecurities. So all of them could lose crap, eh? you know, like the local people, eh, where I try to take on these things and I take on money and, you know, all of these, you know, maintenance that was not tight enough. So we're overspending these categories. Our cars are not being cared for properly. All of these things just started to magnify, right? So before we had that cash flow where we could now actually manage, because you had the cash flow, but now the cash flow stopped. And then so everything started showing up. Every single thing started showing of what we were not doing correctly. And then I had this big, uh, you know, these, these, these massive roads put in front of me, you know, what do you know? You know, and I had to, I had to ask myself, all right, Erwin, what we are going to know? You know, do you stick to this road or do you pack up and, and move on, you know? And that was a very trying time for me, especially the fact that I was not even on the island. Um, I, I was stuck in a hotel um, for roughly about two months, you know? So that was a very big decision. Uh, and I, I chose to stick Minute Rentals and I, I pushed majority maybe 90 percent of my savings in to kind of re resurrect the company and it was there where i had to know started this was where entrepreneurship got real uh -huh. you know now is now is a time now we have to kind of buckle down and say hey you want this thing you need to do what you need to do and that's now i started learning more about accounts and you know i started putting myself out there to learn more about these things i started putting myself out there to, to better manage cash flow to better present myself where marketing is concerned, understand what marketing really means and what does that mean for the company, um, you know, kind of putting an eye on our vision and how are we going to, to move forward, you know. So that was where I had to really man up in a sense to, to kind of say, hey, we're going to hold on to this thing and we're going to do better. And mm -hmm. I, I came home and I decided I spent, I came home in, so COVID hit in March, I, I arrived home in June. And I stayed home until until about November. I had to leave again because, as I said, you know, now I put all my savings in to find a resurrect company. So now I need cash flow. So I got some better systems in place. I got a, a little better manager. And then I went off again. And uh, we transitioned through 2020 now. And we entered into 2021 and we saw significant growth, right? where you know, things started opening up and, and things started getting better and, and stuff like that. So in uh, initially, we were fighting. I didn't want to let go of the staff. So I, I tried to keep some people on payroll and not send everybody home at once and you know try to just balance because all of these persons... As you say staff, I don't mean to cut you, but what's your staff complement like? It, my staff complement presently is a team of six. Six, okay. So to operate effectively, we need a team of six. Right. You need a team of? Of six. Okay, okay. So with that, we didn't want to let go of all the staff. So we had to kind of hold on for their life. And uh, so we now advanced into 2021. And then the company went, we were doing better. You know, like we, we started hitting numbers way beyond what we hit in, in before COVID, Right. And um, I came home again in 2021. I stayed for another four months or so. And then, uh, like, I went away again. And then I was like, this is it. I found that the company kind of, like, it wouldn't move from this, this place. And this was about last year, August, July, August. And uh, I was talking to, to my better half. And, and she was like, man, you keep trying to, to hire people to do this. Why, why don't you come and just try it a different way? Do it yourself. Right. And so I resigned from my job fully in September. Um, and we took on the challenge of no is it, you know, it's go hard or go home, you know. Right. As, so you've as, you've invested yourself totally now into building your company and building exactly. your brand. Interesting. Exactly. 
what when... what is what is your success strategy like our mission our mission overall is use innovation and technology to, to drive the transportation space right so what success looks like for us is that by between now and 2025 we want to be one of the household names within the Caribbean when it comes down to transportation. So now our biggest our biggest um, aim right now is just to be amongst the top five. You know, so when people think about traveling, they're, they're amongst the Avis, the budget, the island car rental, they're thinking about us as well, right? But that's, that's the strategy it. that you have for the company. But what I'm asking is what is your personal success strategy? Oh. How do you, yes, envision and chart your course for success as a person, and as a businessman? For me personally, I have a few rules. And it, it entails, so I work hard. You know, like my family will complain about that. My aim is to outwork everyone else. I, I won't tell you that I'll be the smartest person or the, 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 the best that whatever we are doing, but I can promise you that I can outwork you, you know? And through that, I have a level of perseverance in getting to what we need to accomplish. And then through hard work and perseverance, I think I have vision. You know, I know where we want to go. I have an idea through, through my travels and, and what I've seen in where we want to go. And I use those guiding principles of hard work perseverance to get here mm -hmm. interesting thank you so much Farron, for sharing your story and your path for growth with us it was a very interesting um, conversation and your company by virtue of its business model is indeed a very unique and interesting one we wish you all the best in your continued endeavors and thank you for speaking with Impacting Jamaica Thank you so much, Samika. It was my pleasure to be here. Impact in Jamaica is powered by the Philip and Christine Gore Family Foundation, Manpower and Maintenance Services Limited, the Jamaica Public Service Company, Red Stripe, Caramed, and Proven Investments Limited. If you or anyone you know is involved with projects and activities that excite, motivate, and encourage, send us an email to impactingjamaica at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Do join us again for another in the series on Google Podcast, Audible, Spotify, Podcast Addict, and Stitcher.